I've been wanting to make a video for the longest time with my thoughts about learning new instruments. I know this is, some of you think you need to specialize. If you're one of those people, then just get past this video, it's not for you. But I like learning new things. I like all kinds of gear and instruments. And so I'm up for the challenge and I wanna share a few things that I've learned along the way. I am in Kerrville, Texas. Actually, I'm in Fredericksburg, Texas now. I've been in Kerrville, I'm heading back to Dallas. Whole different part of the state that I'm used to driving through. So I'm gonna stop along the way and share my thoughts. Right now, I'm behind. I don't have much time to read what, it, what it's about, where it came from, what it's here for, so uh, look it up. Well, my lamest video ever. It's amazing when you try to make something and you go to elaborate efforts, things always go wrong. Like, a mountain is sold out. Or I guess it's a rock. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what I should call it. It looks really cool. So this is me looking at my phone in confusion because earlier that morning I checked the website and there were plenty of openings. So I flipped my hair back, went to the website, and bought a ticket. And I was in. So this is where I gave an introduction to the video, but as you can see, the mic's off, which happens way too much. That's why I had to go back and use the part from Fredericksburg where I was standing in front of the spinny thing to explain what this video is even about. And in case you haven't noticed, there's a porta potty in the shot. So I got some shots of the trail and the rock and me going check, 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 check. All right, there's the rock behind me. You might not be able to tell in this light, but my beard, I'm getting some gray in it. And although I still would love to be a rock star, maybe play the guitar, drums, something like that, but I realize that time's kind of ticking away. And as I get to be an old man, I'm starting to realize that I have a love for these organic type instruments like mandolin and dobro and steel guitar. And I was watching one of my favorite artists, his name is Rustin Kelly, and he writes these amazing songs. And his dad plays steel guitar, pedal steel guitar with him. And it's incredible. And I think one day my boys are gonna grow up. And so I wouldn't mind be the guy, being the old man sitting in the back, backing up my sons on a little pedal steel. So that's kind of what led to this a newfound love of trying all these new instruments. I'm already beat and I'm not even anywhere close to the top and hopefully the audio is not too bad and too windy. But the first thing is that trying new instruments makes you think about music in a completely different way. I'm gonna try to hold this thing up. This is me trying to vlog. It's beating. If you're like me and guitar is your thing or maybe piano is your thing, you probably hear music the way you see it or you see it the way you hear it. Uh, guitar is weird too because of the way it's laid out and fourths and fifths and thirds or whatever it is. I think my camera's about to fall down, don't fall down. But for instance, I've been playing the mandolin recently and it's tuned in fifths and it makes so much more sense to my ear. And it's so much easier to do scales and runs because they translate from every part of the neck. And so I think about music in a different way and learning to play the steel guitar, it's not steel guitar, it's a lap steel with benders, it's really cool. I'll make a video about it soon. It's the first time that, I mean, I've played some slide guitar, but this is the first time I'm really controlling my pitch and getting a handle on that and learning how to play these different chords. And it just all looks so different to me. And so it sounds different to me and it makes me think in a different way. Second thought, be careful who you listen to. Whew, having trouble already. So here's what happens with me. I get excited about an instrument. I hear a band that plays it the way that I really like to hear it. And then I start studying the instrument. So I, for mandolin, I ended up with li watching Ricky Skaggs play mandolin when he was five. And it was so depressing because he's better than I will ever be in a million years. And you how? Seven years old. Seven years old. Try not to always look for the best people at that particular instrument as inspiration because you're never gonna be that, but you don't need to be that. You just need to be good enough to make it work in the songs that you're making in the style. So there's this band called Watch House that I found. <coughs> used to be called Mandolin Orange, and they're fantastic. And the guy can fly around the mandolin, but he can also write super, super tasteful parts. And that's who I watch to get inspiration.
that leads to the next thought. Most parts in most songs are incredibly simple. I have years and years of experience as a producer and engineer watching talented players come into a studio and do warm up exercises that are amazing. They sound killer stuff. I mean, just crazy rhythms or what, you know, crazy parts that they would never play. And then when it comes time for the song to actually happen, they play a couple notes here and there, play some basic chords, find a few moments to add something. So remember, that's the goal here. But you do want to learn a few really cool licks that you can show off at the beginning so that people think, oh, this guy's it's worth bringing in. I feel like I'm always standing really awkward because I need to be close enough to the mic, but here we go. Number four, and this is an important one, and I think some of you might kind of, oh, learn how to edit yourself better. And what I mean by that is I can't tell you how many times I learned to play one chord very difficult with my fingers and you get it to where you want it to be and you play it and you record it and then you play another one and then you record it and you move it around. And so I did that all the time. But what I've learned, and I learned this playing bass and I learned this playing all these things, is that when I can see it on the grid, say I'm playing a part and I'm rushing or I'm dragging, when I can see it, then I can make that adjustment. Or if I can't play it, when I can hear it played, I have to use my intuition and know, is that something that I could eventually play or that another human being could play? You don't want it to sound unrealistic. But I've learned that when I get it down on the recording and it sounds good and it sounds the way that I want it to sound, well then I can learn how to play that. But I've heard how I can sound when I play the part right. And it's me, it's not somebody else. It's actually my fingers playing a pick on the mandolin. And I can replicate that with practice. Still got a ways to go. It must seem like a good place to stop. I am really out of shape. I blame the Christmas holidays because I was doing pretty good playing badminton three days a week. Apparently badminton skills do not translate to rock climbing skills. All right, let's talk about buying instruments. I know most of you musicians know this, but one of the worst things you can do is buy the cheapest instrument. Now don't go buy the expensive one unless you are committed to it, but the cheapest instrument will always, almost always play poorly. And if the instrument doesn't play right, you're not gonna wanna get it. I recently upgraded to a much better mandolin. It was you know, about three times more expensive than the original one, but it plays so much better and I don't ever wanna put it down. Getting higher still. Also keep this in mind with every type of instrument, whether it's a synthesizer, guitar, mandolin, whatever, there seems to be a level where the resale value stays consistent. Below that value, super cheap, doesn't last at all. Even some mid-tier instruments don't last very well. But there's a price that you can pay where you can get that money out of it if you need to, especially on the higher end models of guitars and such, but even some of those high mid levels. So consider that when you're telling your wife that you uh, really need a new dobro. I found myself a nice quiet place to finish out this video. Hey. Hey, bud. Here. Well, I thought I found a spot. All right, no little kids yet, but they keep showing up out of nowhere. Before I continue, big props to Christian Henson for climbing that mountain every day to talk to us. That's a lot of work. I assume it's something like this. And I'm done for the day. I should not have planned a five hour drive after this. But for all of you out there who are wanting to start a YouTube channel or thinking about it, you should do it because I absolutely would have just driven home. But I thought this would make a good video. And so I climbed a big rock and I would have never done that before. So start a YouTube channel for exercise. What are we talking about? Your learning will be accelerated. Keep in mind, you're not learning music again when you pick up a new instrument. You're learning that specific instrument. And the skills from my guitar are translating to my mandolin. Now, it's still difficult and it's still super strange and super, it's not natural for my fingers to do some of the things it needs to do to play right and to play fast. But I've got there really fast and I did not expect to get there as fast as I did. Now, I've got a long ways to go, but I know it's building and I'm gonna use that information. I may have already said this, but I'm lightheaded. 
the fretboard of my mandolin is laid out just like a violin so that's going to be the next thing and the attempts at learning to get my pitch right on the lap steel is going to translate to not having frets on the violin so everything builds on each other all right next thought i should move to a different location but i'm tired and i may not find a good one there's no one around here at this point one thing that i can say confidently that i'm above average at is playing to a click track. I have been listening to a click track in my ear, pounding for 20 plus years. Sometimes I leave it on and my friends are in the room thinking, John, shut that off, and I don't even hear it. Whether it's bass guitar or acoustic guitar or whatever, I can play solidly on a click track because I can look at the waveform, I can listen to it, I can see where I'm at. And I, I believe that helps me learn quicker than the average person. Watching people learn how to play an instrument, they want to play the notes as fast as they can, and they don't think about the timing. But every the timing is everything. And when you can get the timing down, then you can focus on the subtleties of the parts. I'm learning this with every single instrument. There's a point where you learn how to play the notes, and then there's a point where you learn how to really play the notes. And it's just part of the process. But if your timing is good, you will get there faster. I did move one last time. Hopefully it's a little more shielded from the wind. Oh, I don't think it is. Let me try this. I hope that's better. Got a nice side light. Last thought, it'll help you get gigs. And that's what we want, is opportunities to play. There is a man who I've been working with for almost 15 years now. He lives in Dallas. He's a multi-instrumentalist. His name is Milo Daring, and he's amazing. And I, he played a show with me one time, and it was the highlight of my musical career that he agreed to even do it. He plays mandolin, he plays dobro, violin, pedal steel, and banjo, and acoustic guitar, electric guitar, anything else that you can name. And he's amazing at all those things, but I have to believe that he's not the best at every single one of those instruments in town. There's probably people that are better at all those things. But when I'm working on a song, usually I'll think, oh, this needs maybe mandolin or dobro. But then the next thought is, what this needs is Milo. Because Milo can play all those instruments, and I think it's great that he's really good at all those things, but I don't, what I need is Milo. I need the way that Milo thinks about music and the instruments that he brings to that and his willingness to listen to my music, what I'm doing. He does, he sits there for, listens to the song and charts it out. And he's just listening and thinking and thinking, and then we talk about it and he finds that common ground and he plays the instruments the way they need to be played for my song. And so it's so much easier for me to call Milo because I know it's gonna be great. I know it's gonna be musical and I know it's gonna work and I know it's gonna get all these different flavors and textures that I could not get unless I called five or six different people. So that's who I wanna be. Milo, I wanna be you. So I'm giving myself 20 years to get there. I need a, I don't know how old you are. I'm not, I'm not saying you're 20 years older than me. It's gonna take about that long of me practicing eight hours a day to get even to about half of your skill level. But Milo, when you decide to give it up, and I don't want that to be anytime soon, maybe you could give all the people that call you my name, maybe. But for that to happen, I have a lot of work to do and about five instruments to learn. When I was producing bands and engineering bands in my 20s, I felt like there was a clock ticking away, like I was getting too old because all my friends were not doing it anymore. And that's so silly. But with all these other instruments, I've got a lifetime to learn it and get good at these instruments. And when I'm old, I can get an RV and convince my wife to travel around the country and go to bluegrass festivals. So that's my goal. And that's all I've got. Learn something new today, and I'll talk to you soon.